Hi everyone and welcome to Sex with Paula. I'm Nurse Paula, a sexual health nurse and educator. Today I'm going to talk about sex education and why it's important. But before I do, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on my medically accurate and mostly professional sex education videos. Maybe even throw me a like. Mm -hmm. I recently posted a response to 2018's rollback of the Ontario sex education curriculum in Canada. Have I mentioned I'm Canadian? I'm Canadian. This video is a response to the proposed solution. Opponents of the progressive 2015 curriculum expressed concern that sex education is a how-to guide. First of all, why is that bad? Those opponents suggested that parents should teach sex ed at home. You know, home, where your parents are or your siblings, or your grandparents, or for some their foster parents, legal guardians, and other caregivers? And isn't home the place where everyone can be themselves and has freedom to say exactly how they feel at all times? Give me a break. I don't even want to talk about sex with my parents, and I want to talk about sex with everyone. 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 Furthermore, the suggestion that parents should be responsible for teaching sex education means that parents could spread misinformation or falsify information based on feelings of shame or embarrassment. Which is why I'm about to bust three all too common sex myths you may have heard at family dinner or eavesdropping through your sibling's bedroom door. Myth number one, too much penetrative sex makes the vagina loose and undesirable. Fact? The vagina is an elastic muscle naturally designed to stretch and contract. If a vagina can handle something as massive as a baby, it can deal with a penis, dildo, fingers, you get it. Myth number two, you shouldn't masturbate. Actually, you should masturbate, if you want to, because masturbation relieves stress, because it releases endorphins, which make you happy. Masturbation can also relieve headaches, encourage blood flow and circulation, reduce menstrual cramps, and improve the quality of your sleep. Did you know that the vibrator was originally a therapeutic device that doctors used on patients to induce orgasm? It was actually the fifth electric appliance approved for home use in the US, after sewing machines, fans, kettles, and toasters. Yes, really? Myth number three, blue balls, i.e. the pain that one experiences in their testes after prolonged sexual stimulation can damage the scrotum, aka ball sack. False. Blue balls is nothing more than excess pressure due to the increase of fluids to the genital area. Given time, or with the right method of release, I'm talking about masturbation or other fun consensual arousing activities, the fluid will drain on its own. <sighs> and folks, never ever use blue balls as an excuse to pressure someone into sex. More importantly, just don't pressure someone into sex, ever. After watching this video, it should come as no surprise that inaccurate sex education spreads misinformation. So let me ask you this. Did you grow up hearing any of the aforementioned myths or other bits of reliable information? And did that influence any choices you made? You wouldn't let someone be your doctor, dentist, chiropractor if they didn't have the right level of education, right? So why is sexual health education different? But seriously, that's why I'm committed to bringing you inclusive and medically accurate sexual health information. Hey everyone, I'm Paula Burrows and I play Nurse Paula in Sex with Paula and the Dangers of Online Dating. Please subscribe to this channel, take a look and watch both seasons, like every video and like every video. And follow D-O-O-D the series on Instagram and Twitter. Got a burning question about sexual health? Email your questions to me at sexwithpaula at gmail.com. See you next time. Yeah, really? Yeah, really? Yes, really? Yeah, really? <laughs>